Hi, my name is Anthony Natale, and I'm doing my speech today on the Second Amendment and why it is important that we continue to protect the rights of the Second Amendment. Um, in 1791, the Bill of Rights was added to the United States Constitution as the first ten amendments. These amendments were added to protect the people's fundamental rights. They were added to appease the Anti-Federalists because they were worried that the Constitution would not protect the rights of the citizens. There was nothing in the Constitution uh, that protected the people's rights, and this was concerned because they had just fought a revolutionary war to get rid of a tyranny, and the whole purpose of it was to not reestablish a tyranny, but to to get rid of it and and for the people to actually have control over the things that they do but be governed in some sort of way. So the Bill of Rights created was created in order to ensure that the people would have rights that the government could not deny or suppress. And the right to bear arms, which is the Second Amendment, was one of these rights. Um, and it's still a very important right today, um, even though some people think that it is not needed anymore. But this right gave the people back the right to, to have weapons to protect themselves. Um, yeah, back then there was more to it because they had militias, which were the, the, was the early army, and they, they needed the right to bear arms in order to form the different militias, but it was also still a form of personal protection, and um, that's why it's still so important today. So the Second Amendment allowed people to protect themselves. But since the creation of you know the, these amendments, some of the amendments have started to get misinterpreted, or the government tries to want to limit some of the things that the amendments say, but that's not what they were set up to do. And one of the most controversial is obviously the Second Amendment, and especially after all the different things that have been happening in our world today. Um, the Second Amendment becomes a more and more debated amendment every day and, and, and gun control every day and it's it's it gets both ends of the spectrum are crazy and they need to find a, a simple middle so many people are advocates of the second amendment but a lot of the people think it's old and outdated and not needed you know I talked about you know needing a militia and a lot of people say well there's no need for a militia anymore so why should people be able to bear guns anymore well it's more than that the second amendment states a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of the free state the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed so what this is saying is that the founding fathers put this together to help create a non-professional army of the people and so that they can always hold and protect their rights together um, and there have been a lot of different views um, there, there's actually two different views to the, the Second Amendment today there's the individual rights and the collective rights. The individual interpretation holds that the, in, the individual right to bear arms is a basic right uh, on the same order as the right to free speech. The collectivist in interpretation argues that the Bill of Rights provides no protection for an individual right to own a gun. So they're saying that such a right must exist under par uh, particular state constitutions because the Second Amendment is about the militia and nothing else. So it depends on which way you interpret it, collectivist versus individualist. Um, now, the Constitution never says anything about gun control. And uh, this is why it's so hard for anybody to actually pass any sort of gun control, because the Constitution doesn't say it's allowed or not allowed. So, gun control advocates claim that because of the lack of gun control, that there is so much violence in the United States today. 
But on the other hand, the anti-gun control advocates say that the right to bear arms is just as important today as it was back then. Because if there was no regulation, then if there's no right to bear arms, then the, the bad people will always figure out how to get weapons. It's the people who go and, and buy their firearms from a store, who go through the background check. Those are the people that are, are upholding the Second Amendment today. You know, no matter what they do for gun control, somebody will always be able to buy a gun out of the back of a trunk. And and that's where they need to come together and, and figure out the happy middle and figure out that, yeah, guns need to be controlled to a certain point, but to what point are we taking away rights of the people? So, overregulation and underregulation. There has to be a happy medium. And, you know, there is a lot of support in, in both the individualist way and the collectivist way. Um, some of the support by the collectivists um, are in cases such as um, United States versus Miller in 1939, um, where Miller was bootlegging uh, shotguns that had a barrel length of 18 inches or less, and um, it went through you know, those preliminary court hearings it got supported in the right of Miller, um, and then it got reappealed to the Supreme Court, and basically the Supreme Court said that um, that the Second Amendment cannot um, they cannot say the Second Amendment guarantees the right to keep and bear such an instrument because it was not a gun used for hunting or personal protection, but he was bootlegging mass amounts, and um, it, it was more of a collectivist view that it was not being done in the right way. And I think that is a perfect example of things that um, the government should control. You know, it's a sawed-off shotgun is what a barrel of less than 18 inches in length is. And it's not a practical use um, in, a, in a military or militia purpose, and um, it, it doesn't uphold the actual amendment. It's actually a, a legal weapon. Um, so in, in cases like that, the court, you know, said, no, we have to regulate things like this. You know, sawed-off shotguns, they're, they're not the right thing to have. So the collectivists in that point, you know, they're right. Um, but then if you go to the individualist view, you can look that um, United States versus Emerson, um, where Dr. Emerson was under a restraining order from his wife, it, uh, under restraining order from his wife, but he was also in possession of a firearm, and he was uh, he was brought to court in '99 because the, the Constitution, he, he said that because he had the firearm, but he was under a restraining or, order, it, it was considered, they wanted to take away his firearm because he was under a restraining order. But under the Second Amendment, and the more individualist view, said that Emerson had the right to keep that firearm as personal protection because he was not using it in any which way that would have been used in, in a bad way. It was, it was for his own personal protection. And, and that's the more individualistic view, um, because the, the Second Amendment does protect individual rights as well as collective rights. So the violation of the Second Amendment can be tied to several of the other amendments. Um, you know, if you violate the Second Amendment, you're also violating the Fourth Amendment. You know, if you want to do gun control, you're, you're you know, the Fourth Amendment is it guards against unreasonable searches and seizures. So, if you violate the Second Amendment by saying we need to control guns and you actually want to go and start taking guns away from people who are, are holding them, you're also starting to violate the Fourth Amendment. 
um, and, and it, it, it cascades from there. Um, so it's important that people in the government can can work together to figure out a happy medium in gun control. Is there is there any reason why um, they should be selling mass amounts of you know these high caliber semi-automatic weapons to everybody you know no there there isn't but at the same time people have a right to protect themselves and if they so choose that they feel threatened that they want to have that and and they're going to do it in the right way they pass a background check then then that's okay the people who are, are getting these guns and doing heinous things with them are, are not always acquiring these guns through the the whole legal situation so it's always going to be a touchy subject on the second amendment but the court really they need to take in consideration and decide that what is appropriate for the time era and what's going to be important in the future so guns can cause violence if they are in the hands of wrong people that's what it comes down to the goal is to make sure that the guns never fall into the hands of the wrong people and 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 that is i think a point that both the collectivists and individualists can agree on and i think that is where everybody needs to come to a head and say we need to figure out how to get the guns off the streets but not stop selling guns out of out of uh, a store where people are buying them in the right manner so that's my persuasive speech and um, hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you.